What you are about to watch is something that I should have done years ago, but I am extremely grateful that I got done today. My grandma is 94 years old. And to me, she is the same lady that I've known my entire life. Her eyesight may have deteriorated, but her mind remains sharp. She moves independently of any aid. And that led me to question of how did she manage it? In this interview, we go over her story, how she was raised, what school was like way back in the day to meeting my grandfather, facing adversity in both the early parts of their marriage and at the very end. And finally, what's her one takeaway from what I would consider a life well lived? I am truly blessed to have had this opportunity as I know that people don't live forever, but I'll always have this memory from here on out. All that being said, here is a conversation with my grandma. I'm now joined with my very specialist of guests, my grandma. Grandma, how are you today? Well, I'm doing well, Matt. I'm looking glad. forward to our interview. <laughs> I'm I'm really looking forward to it too. And what brought this about was the fact that near the end of summer, early fall, you took the time to write to all of your grandkids, which there's numerous of us, um, about kind of your life story and putting it, uh, I guess, you know, pen to paper or key, finger to keyboard. Um, and writing it out for us. I was wondering, the kind of my first question was, what was the what was the reasoning behind you wanting to take the time to to pass along your life story to us? Well, I thought since everybody lives all over the world, like Curtis in Germany and Aaron and and Switzerland and all over, I I don't get to know my grandchildren, and my grandchildren don't get to know me. Mm. So I thought if I wrote a little bit about my life they'd have an idea who their grandma was as a child, as a teenager, whatever. No, and then yeah, I know there was, even though I'm one of the grandkids who's gotten to spend time with you as I've grown up since we live in the same city, I know I definitely learned um, things about yourself that I had no idea. So um, I definitely, I'm very grateful that you took the time. And I know all the grandkids are extremely grateful for that as well. I guess one of the other motivating things was because I never got to know my grandmothers. They, uh, one of them came to Canada, but the other ones died in Russia mm. and I was born in Canada. So I only got to know them also by uh, stories that my parents told about their, about their moms. And so, so I thought, well, maybe this is one way that I could share my story with my grandkids. <laughs> no, and, and they, that's, and for, because it's going to be, obviously, my family's going to watch, but also have a large, or no, a, a demographic of people around my age um, that listen to when I, I talk to people. Um, to put in perspective, Grandma, you're 94, correct? Yes. And <laughs> what's been astonishing for myself, and I shared this with you uh, for your birthday this past year, is for the last 15 years, I want to give or take, I haven't noticed like you're like the same person to me from when I was a kid to now. Well, thank you. <laughs> That's a compliment. I would I would say so too. And it's it's not 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 um it's not ordinary to see someone to both live to the age of 94, but also to have the quality of life that you've been able to maintain. So I hope by kind of going through your story a little bit, um, there's things that I'll be able to learn and you know, people who are watching will be able to learn about a life well lived. So that's kind of the one of the objectives behind this. Yes. Sound good to you? I, yes. And you know, Matt, one of the reasons I think that I'm still fairly bright is because I've enjoyed good health all my mm. life. You know, God has really given me good health. Um, and, and so that contributes to longevity. Absolutely. So talking about kind of, you said that you were, you were born here. Uh, born in Canada, and you, your family had moved 
about two years previous from Russia, correct? Yes. Um, from what you can remember of like your, the, the earliest times of, of your first memories, et cetera, um, what, was, what was life like back then? Because that would have been, what have been 19? Well, I was born in 1926. There we go. And, uh, well, again, my very memories, of course, I don't remember them, but I've been told about them. When my parents came to Canada, they lived together with my, my dad's sister and her family. Yep. And I was born into a group of six siblings and six cousins. I was number 13 in one house. And how big, how big was this house? It was not big, I think. <laughs> it, was, it was a two-story house, but the, the older cousins and my older brothers in the summertime, they slept on the hayloft. It okay. just wasn't, it was too hot to have so many in the house. Yeah. So <laughs> what, I guess, because that's just something that it doesn't get experienced uh, nowadays. No. What was, no. what was, what was growing up with 12 what was the age the age gap between um, the youngest and the oldest of the of that twelve or thirteen? Okay. Uh, well, my oldest sister is sixteen years older than I am, mm. so yeah, she was sixteen years older. So I guess the one thing that would inevitably happen because your parents can't be watching everybody is the fact that older siblings and older cousins have to look after the younger ones. Oh, absolutely. Oh, for sure. And the older cousins, I mean, they were teenagers and everything was done by horses in those days. You know, so they could, they, they knew how to handle horses, the older cousins. And so they helped on the farm because we lived on the farm. And so they could help that way. And so you go, growing up, you went to a, a kind of the, the, the classic one room school, correct? Yes, one room rural school. And you know what? We learned a lot of things. That country school had its advantages because obviously the teacher could only um, conduct one class at a time. So the other classes had to be busy in some way. And if you were kind of a bright student and got your assignment done quickly, then you would listen in on what the teacher was teaching to the older grades. Mm. Yep. I was in grade one, I listened to the grade threes do their math, or when I was in grade five, I listened to the grade seven and eight do their history and stuff. So in that respect, uh, it was not so bad. How many, how many kids would have been in, in your school, if, if you can remember kind of off the top of your head? Yes, there, it, was, um, it wasn't a very big school. The total enrollment, it was a one room, of course, with all yeah. grades in one room and um, uh, grades one to grade eight. And there was probably about 25. Mm. From grade one to grade eight, I, had, I just had one classmate. We were just two of us. Mm. Two of us in grade one, all the way up to grade eight, there were just two of us. And then after, then I went to junior high or senior high, then I went into... Um, a bigger school in, in a town called Oakville. And um, yeah, that there were more students there. Then we had only one class in one room, not yeah. eight classes in one room. Because you went you went to MCI, uh, Mennonite Collegiate Institute, yes, correct? Yes, I did that for grade 11 and 12. And so that was, that was a, like a, a, a full like boring school, correct? You, you lived yes. out there? We lived there, yes. What did and you... Yeah, go ahead. I was gonna. I was just gonna ask, what did that teach you about independence at, at that at that young of an age? Or I guess you were probably yeah. seven, sixteen, seventeen at the time you moved away. Uh, well, I guess it taught us. Well, you know, life there was in that school was very very structured. Hmm. Uh, we had to wear uniforms to go to school every day. No uh, problem. Uh, when we um, uh, on Sundays, we had to wear a different uniform, um, uh, and, and we had study period. Uh, when we got home from school, we took off our uniforms, 
and put on regular uh, regular clothes. But in the evening from seven to nine was study period. We had to be in our rooms. Uh, we were, I was in a, in a house with um, 20 other girls, mm. but we had each had our own, uh, you know, our own. We were, my room had four girls in it, but most of them had two girls in it. And so we had our study periods. We had, we had to come down at nine o'clock for evening devotions. The, the house parents that were looking after us getting our food and everything. Um, they had evening devotions. We had to, it was compulsory to go mm. to attend those kind of things. And what do you think the, the benefit of, or if there was uh, a benefit to having life so structured um, at, at the school? Um, well, I think it gave the parents a peace of mind at home mm -hmm. that their kids weren't running around that they were actually doing some studying and mind you we had our shenanigans too we lived close to the u.s border and not the girls from us but the guys would sneak out at night and cross the border into the u.s and, yeah, yeah. and that sort of thing so there were of course ordinary teenage uh, shenanigans going on but by and large the parents at home because they had to pay for the education i mean it wasn't a preschool we had to pay. Mm. Uh, they uh, they were had peace of mind that we were actually being, um, you know, watched to make sure that we would get our studies done and that sort of thing. Was uh, was Grandpa ever part of the, the shenanigans of crossing oh, the U.S. border? He borders? was. He he was a bad guy. You know what? <laughs> he, he was just about expelled from school. In fact. He never did go to grade 12. He finished after yeah. grade 11, but he had started there from grade nine, nine, 10 and 11. But uh, if it hadn't been for, for great grandpa uh, being very generous towards paying school, supporting the school monetarily, I think uh, grandpa would have been expelled sooner, but <laughs> <laughs> they needed the money from great grandpa. So they... <laughs> oh yeah. In fact, you know, I knew Grandpa, of course, from from a very young age, mm -hmm. and we fell in love. I'm not even just sure. I think I loved him all my life, actually. Mm. But uh, um, at one point, it was I actually wrote him a note and said something to the effect that, you know, he should think about the money that he's wasting in in all these shenanigans and when his parents were trying to give him a good education <laughs> i i was gonna wait a, like a little bit longer but since you you, you brought up because i was you you talked about how in, in your emails that after uh a year of teaching um because you went to teacher college became a teacher um that 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 next year is when um you married grandpa so i yeah. was I, as as someone who's you know, I'm definitely not married at, at this point. Um, what did dating or a courting look like when, when you guys were in school or uh, leading up to getting married? <laughs> well, let me see. How much do I want to give away? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, I, when I was teaching school at Rosendale, it wasn't too far away from, from Newton where Grandpa lived. And so I often for the weekend, I went, I went to Newton, but on the way, and I went to Newton from, from Rosendale by train, but the train didn't get, get to my boarding place um, for, uh, at a convenient time. So the folks from Newton always took me back to my boarding place where I was mm. boarding for teaching. And usually grandpa did that. And the, uh, Oh, we'd hold hands in the car and and um, sat beside him close. We didn't have seat belts in those days, so we could get cuddled up pretty close. And, <laughs> oh. and uh, um, you said about the, you talked about the train. And when you when you were working that first job, you said you had to walk what was it two miles to work? Yes. It's, oh yeah, Grandma. Grandma, that must have been that must have been freezing during the winter. Well, it was, it was cold, of course it was cold, but I, I was, you know, that was such a difficult first year of my teaching. I, I just had to get away for the weekend. I didn't care if I froze to death or not. 
<laughs> and then, just... and yeah, and then so you 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 two get married. You move into move. Do you guys move into the city right away? Um, yes, because uh, Grandpa had taken and instead of taking grade twelve, he took uh, business administration and mm -hmm. whatnot a business course in Winnipeg and he actually had a job in Winnipeg already before we were married. He was a junior accountant. He took, um, yeah, he took business similar to maybe to what you're, you're doing. He went into, he worked for credit unions and uh, mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. And yeah. I think it's, it's fitting um, or I wonder if you could see any similarities because after being married, um, finding out you're pregnant with my oldest aunt yes um, he he gets tuberculosis and then is living in a sanatorium um, yes. so i'm just wondering if would you would you almost consider yourself more prepared for what we've dealt with the last six months um because of that um well probably although i was planning on teaching when we like after we were first married, I was planning on teaching and we were mm. in fact looking at the free press, I remember, for a teacher, for possibilities to teach in the city. And, uh, um, but then I, I became pregnant and I was so sick to my stomach and whatnot that uh, uh, grandpa said, I don't think you're gonna teach. So, uh, but whether it, whether it prepared me, maybe, I don't know. Because that, that you went through the year, what, what was the, the practice in terms of, were you able to visit grandpa in person or were you have to be kind of like behind uh, any kind of screening um, or? No, but no, I could see him in person. Okay. Yeah. And uh, as long as I lived in Winnipeg, like Ruth, uh, your aunt Ruth was born in April and I moved, I sold the house uh, in summertime or in May, maybe June. Yeah, probably June. She was born in April. I sold the house in Winnipeg. It was on Dun Robin Street here in North Kelowna, actually. Sold the house and, um, well, and moved to my parents' place in the country. Mm. And then my mother looked after Ruthie while I was teaching school the coming fall. Like she was born in April. And in September, I had a school. That's how I uh, earned yeah, my, yeah. Uh, my living there. Yeah, but I, I tried to get to the city every weekend if I could to visit grandpa on the weekend. And do you, do you remember at all of, or of, uh, in those visits, um, kind of like what grandpa's spirits would have been like? Um... <sighs> you know, um, well, he was a believer for one thing, and he <laughs> prayed a lot. And uh, I don't think he was discouraged. I, I don't think he had the idea that he wouldn't come out of the, out of the sanatorium. See, his mother died at, in the sanatorium also of TB, mm -hmm. like tuberculosis. Yeah. That's what Grandpa had. And she died there, but I, he wasn't, you know what? When you, he, he was 21, yeah. uh, Matt. When you're 21, uh, you don't think of dying. It's you know, true. He, 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 yeah, his spirits wrong. were quite, uh, quite optimistic. But even though he was in the sanatorium for over a year, he was there for 13 months. But he, he was never discouraged. Well, I shouldn't say never. He probably was. But um, uh, not depressed to the mm. point where he was ready to give up or that kind of thing. And then was it basically because grandpa you guys moved back or grandpa moved in with your parents for that the kind of the remainder of that school year correct that's right that's um, right and then you guys made the move to newton that's right and then yeah. all of a sudden there was there was three generations on one oh on yeah one that was wonderful matt <laughs> that oh. was absolutely wonderful not everybody would have i don't think liked it some some like Aunt Esther and Uncle Henry, who lived, who was Grandpa's younger brother, uh, they lived in in Newton too after they were married, and um, Aunt Esther found it quite difficult to get 
to to get adjusted to these three different generations, you know. Mm. But I didn't I, because I had known them from a long time back. Like I knew the great great your great great grandmother, Dick Grandma's grandpa's grandma. I knew her too since mm. I was young because my oldest sister became grandpa's stepmother. You see. Yeah. So I, I knew the situation in Newton, and we always liked to go to visit there, even before we were married. The well, logistically, what how about how many people was that kind of at its maximum um, amount? Huh. Well, uh, at at I don't know at what point, like, but we lived there, and uh, Grandpa and I lived there uh, after. Brian was, we moved to we moved to Alberta in 1971, and Ryan was born in '65, so he was six years old, and um, and we had lived there since Ruth was little. Uh, well, there was there were a number of different families living there. Uncle Henry got married; he was living there when we were living there. There mm -hmm. there was all kinds of different little houses that we. And some of them were built new, Uncle John and Margaret. Uh, Uncle John was grandpa's second youngest brother. Uh, he and his wife lived there. And um, yeah, it was like a little village. It was like mm -hmm. a Hatterite colony. That's what it was like. <laughs> and well, if you, if you could boil down a few, just a few of the takeaways um, that you, okay, you learned or you, the, that that situation um, hammered home for you, what would those, those few things be? Um, like, in what respect do you mean? So I know like one of the, one of the things that I think you mentioned in one of the emails was just the, the love of music or just the, the prevalence of music. Oh yeah, that was for sure. That was definitely a highlight. I mean, all the dicks sing started with your great, great grandmother, your grandmother, uh, your great grandmother and yeah they all sang, they all sang they all sang quite well the music was a big thing and and sports you know mm. on the yard uh, your great grandpa always had a skating rink in winter time and with a slide and all the cousins you're, that were there you're messing with me sorry all the cousins that were there um uh, played together like mm. we were never alone or lonesome or Although we had some rules, Aunt Esther had some rules, um, like your Aunt Rose and Aunt Esther's twin girls were only a year apart, mm -hmm. and they always would like to play together, but we had rules. Um, they couldn't play together um, between 11 o'clock in the morning and three o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon, because they had to have their rest, and they had to help with dinner, lunch dishes, mm -hmm. and different things. So... But by and large, yeah. and then all, and and then the, I guess the. My my uncles and my uncles, or and yes. my dad's and uncles uncles would have been working the farm, correct? Yes, Uncle Eric, especially the first thing after he came home from school, he was maybe 13, 12, 13, 14. He'd have a little snack, do his homework, and then rush across the street, across the road. To grandpa's yard and do whatever he could to help with with fred uncle fred mm -hmm. uncle henry uncle jake yeah that was a that was great for the kids they they really loved it it's it's something that i've grown more um i guess attracted to is the is the idea of kind of more manual labor of working outside because that's definitely not something that i grew growing up i was no. jumping to do that's for sure <laughs> Um, da, 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 da. I guess they, I was going to take kind of a little bit of a leap in terms of what the, the time frames, because you guys moved um, to Alberta, you moved back home. Um, one thing that jumped out to me, and I'm, I'm curious about, because I've, I don't think I've ever asked you really about, was what were some of your favorite experiences um, traveling around the world to, to see grandchildren? be born and seeing fa the, your family that quite literally spread out all over the world? Well, that, you know, the fact that, uh, that they were living in different places gave us 
the opportunity to travel. We probably wouldn't have gone to, let's say, Indonesia if Uncle Henry and Aunt Barb hadn't lived there. You know, yeah. that's where Karen was born. And, and actually, so was uh, John and Mark, maybe. Yeah, they were all born in Indonesia, I think. And um, yeah, the, the, and uh, Ruth and Elden, and Ruth, they were in uh, Nairobi, Kenya, in Africa. And so, yeah, it was the kids that took us there. We might have done some traveling when Grandpa worked with Palliser, but on the, it, like, yeah, it wasn't so easy to get away. But uh, I was wondering if you if you have any any stories from any of those those trips that you that stand out in your memory at all. Oh, uh, well, not particularly. I was like with when we went to Indonesia. It was like a little North America in the, in the Indonesian mm -hmm. culture because the oil company that Uncle Henry worked with was an American oil company. And uh, I was impressed Aunt Barb had a maid in the house and, mm. you know, she, they were living there like royalty practically, you know. Uh, and, and it was hot. We, we, did do, we did some sightseeing, not an awful lot of sightseeing because the kids were so, so, so very small. Mm. Um, and at, what, at what point did you guys travel to Israel? Well, that was kind of a side, that was when we went to at, when we went to Africa, actually, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, we took a little longer time and, and did some travel to Israel, and yeah, that was interesting. I was I enjoyed that a lot too. Was what was what was it like um, as 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 a believer, as growing up with the the Christian faith, to see some of the the, the places that you been the, yeah. of the stories you've been told about since you probably can remember. Yes, well. It was surreal, you know, you think this is where Jesus walked. This is where the hill of Golgotha was, where the crosses mm. were. Those were, of course, now commercialized almost uh, because they were tourist attractions, you know. But uh, so those, those were the places that were there. And what impressed me was the wall around Jerusalem, uh, the city of Jerusalem. And there was still ruins of it there at the time, and I thought, my goodness, you know, centuries ago, they built these great big walls and they stood for years and years, and they stood for centuries. Where yeah. did they get the mortar? Where did they get uh, all the uh, stuff that you need for building, you know? And they didn't have big cranes and heavy no. equipment. It was all handwork. <laughs> yeah, all. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think the, the, time, the time that it took must have taken um, we can't, as again, as someone who's grown up in... And the, the, the labor costs, you know, I mean, a lot of people died doing those things. And it was usually slaves that were, yeah. uh, had to work the hardest, the most difficult things. Yeah. It's one of those things as someone who's grown up in the, maybe the 21st century that it's just, I can't fathom it at no, all. No, because no. I've, I've all only lived in the, the time frame of these monumental buildings going up in a year, 18 months, or... Sure, yeah. Um, so, uh, one thing that, and then this is, one thing I realized um, when Grandpa passed away was um, because of how close we were in proximity in terms of seeing you guys all the time, um, and Grandpa would have been probably, or I would have been about five or six when grandpa started showing signs of of dementia dementia yeah um one thing i realized when all the co cousins kind of congregated at our house was everyone all the old all the older cousins had stories um about grandpa that or the grandpa that they can remember yes and i can remember at that point really feeling not down but almost disappointed almost disappointed disappointed is the wrong word but i didn't feel like i had because the, the only grandpa that i could remember was was the grandpa that had um that had dementia yes um do you remember any stories um of myself and grandpa interacting uh whether playing together or kind of anything that stands out to you that's a tough question 
Um, Grandpa loved children like his great, like his dad always loved children. And he liked to um, be with children. But I don't know whether he ever told any stories or whether he actually played, or oh, he might have played ball mm. with, with the, you know, with his younger yeah. grandchildren. Um, well, he liked hockey. He was a great hockey player, actually. And uh, uh, I don't know. I can, I can, I, 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 I do, I can remember, I can, I can remember playing a little bit of, um, of, of, of board games or of dice games um, okay. at, at Edgewood Estates, but again, it's, it's not, it's, it's, it's definitely not something that I hold on to as, um, as like a negative. It was just, yeah. a, it's just kind of a, a fact of the matter that that's just, unfortunately, I think was, was my sister the last, or was, my sister would have been the next grandkid to fly i believe probably um yeah so there were there's there was just experiences that that my me and my sister might have missed out on um yeah my sister being well you obviously did because grandpa was sick for quite a while before he act before we actually moved into donwood mm -hmm. you know when we were living in edgewood estates the even then already there were you know signs of forgetfulness and mm -hmm. he just wasn't that interested somehow in life anymore you know well because i can i can remember um heading over to your guys's place in the afternoon and it would be you know early mid-afternoon and we'd have to be really quiet around the yes. apartment because <laughs> grandpa's still sleeping grandpa grandpa's <laughs> sleeping i was gonna go sneak as many mints as i could Oh, yeah. from, the, from, from the swan uh candy jar yes. and then you take us down to the to the pool in the hot tub area yeah that's right <laughs> as but, a matter of fact i just put some mints into that swan yesterday <laughs> still have it here and the last time i was there i made sure i grabbed a few that's for sure um touched on it a little bit briefly um with with grandpa's decline as, especially at first being rather slow but it was very prolonged um, with the last number of years being um, much more um, intensive in terms of the care that you had to provide for him, um, was there things that you learned either about yourself or kind of just greater um, well, you know, perceptions of, of life itself in, in general? The Bible says, as your days, so shall your strength be. And God always provided the strength and the optimism. I'm basically not a pessimistic person. Mm. I'm, I think I'm quite a, a, a positive person. The grandpa ha was a little more inclined to depression, perhaps. He was quieter. He wasn't as, as uh, loud or whatever uh, as I was. Um, but, you know, I was so glad that it didn't take longer than it did. Mm. I really thank God that, like, we moved into here in... 2011 yeah. and well no we moved into here in 2010 i think but anyway in 2011 he moved into the care home we weren't in where i live now in the independent living we didn't live here very long year and a half or so maybe a little longer and then he went into the care home and then of course i went to see him every day and i spent as much time there as i could um and that was in 2011. And in 2013, he passed away. So he was there only two years, mm. which is which is really a blessing because you see people there that are deteriorate so much. Like in his, in his uh, physically, he didn't deteriorate all that much. Yeah. Mentally, he didn't, he did. But, uh, you know, some people, they, they get so, they, life takes so much out of them, you know, yeah. that they, they just deteriorate. So I was very thankful. I was really thankful that Grandpa could go when he did. I knew but, he wasn't going to get better, but yeah. And I know one thing that that I took um, solace in, and I'm sure my family did, is he he one he seemed to recognize both yourself, um, yeah, and my, my dad for because yes. he again being primary caregivers. Um, yes. But I remember, I think it was probably the last Christmas that we had at Donwood. And at that point, Grandpa was 
basically not talking. Um, was just for lack of a better word, yeah. he was Existing. there. Existing, yeah. Yeah, he was there, but but I just remember um, we sang a little bit as a family. Yes. And you could just see just the like the spark of um, he un, he knew the rhythm. Like I, I think he was moving moving his lips a little bit, maybe trying to like trying to sing a little bit. Um, well, the singing was the last thing that left him, I think. I mean, yeah. singing was so, so much part of him that he would have enjoyed. Yes, he would have enjoyed the last singing. So I think that I'm was... I'm glad you remember that. <laughs> yeah. No, it was... Because I remember um, I had my own my own kind of processing time of um, of of mourning, I guess you, you could yes. say, when Say it came goodbye. To, to, to Grandpa. Because I remember... Um, you guys came over for um, for dinner to to our place, which happened quite frequently. Yes. And for the most part, like again, there was there was forgetfulness. There was asking questions multiple times um, from from Grandpa. But I remember one time I sat across from him, and I looked up for my food, and like we like made eye contact, and I just mm-hmm. knew there was there was no recognition there anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I, I know I kind of made a, a, a choice of, I didn't want to, I already seen him like digress, I guess. Yes, uh, sure. That I did, wasn't going to go see him as, as much as maybe uh, uh, my, I know my sister continued to do a bit more. My, my mom and my dad obviously did, but I can, I very much remember that, that Christmas um, and seeing just like, you know, the, just the spark of, of recognition. Um that, that he still had at that point, which was pretty incredible to see. Well, you know, your dad and I were the last ones to see grandpa alive. Yeah. Like your dad was there when his dad, when his father passed away. Mm-hmm. We were sitting in Donwood in the, uh, um, in, his, in, in, the, in his room and talking, your dad and I, and then your dad said, he's not breathing anymore. He mm-hmm. just, he just died so peacefully, so you know, that's what I took comfort into. There mm-hmm. wasn't a big struggle at the end, you know. Yeah, yeah. Like God was really gracious. Like Satan, is, uh, he wasn't going to let Satan get him back, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, and now, uh, these, these, years, these years later, um, you celebrated your fifth wedding anniversary this past well, year? It, it, uh, our fourth one, our fifth one will be in June. Fifth. Oh, yes, it was the fifth. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we were married in 15, 2015, and it, in 2020, yes, that was our fifth. <laughs> and I know I, I speak for, and you, you acknowledge in your emails, but I know I speak for the family of how grateful we've been um, for um, for you to you and John to, to connect and to be able to kind of live out this phase of of life together. Um, I just wanted to kind of somewhat in closing, and like I said, it's this is for me somewhat selfishly, but also because this will be passed along to the cousins and to to some of my the people that follow me in terms of of in terms of information is 94 years old and again, for the lack of a better word, still like, you know, living your best, best version of the life you possibly could. Um, if you have to distill that some of the wisdom from what you've learned over these, you know, 94 years, what would it, <laughs> not that it has to be super profound, but like what, what have you done in terms of, um, what do you think is the, the recipe for success for, for lack of a better word? Um, Well, I, I'll tell you, Matt, I wake up nearly every morning with a song in my head mm-hmm. or in my, when I think. I, I was talking to Barb yesterday and she said, Mom, you always sound so upbeat. I said, well, you know what? This is my motto. It says in the Bible, um, well, I can't think of a verse. What's a verse I always say, honey? Um, oh, the song. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It's the attitude. Uh, you know, the attitude, your attitude will carry you a long, long way. 
you, you either have a positive net attitude or a negative attitude towards life. And I guess God has given me and with the support of both of my husbands, um, it has just fed my, my good attitude. I don't, I don't think we could, I could sum you up in a, a better word than what you did or in a phrase better than you just did yourself. Um, I thank you very much, Grandma. I okay. very, very, <laughs> very appreciative of, of spending the time um, and how you've been one of the, one of the people to, to shape my, my formative years uh, in many ways. Yeah. Well, um, I'll tell you, Matt, both John and I pray for our families and we have lots of <laughs> kids to pray for every day. So, you know, uh, if anything good happens as a result of our life, it'll be answered to prayer. <laughs> well, so with that, I'd like to, and thanks for the opportunity of sharing too. It was, uh, it was time well spent. I'll, I'll, I'll end it with that. Thank you very much.